What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy Nipsey, such to being back with another video. So, yeah, man, you know, we're here with a tier list video for the Monster Hunter series. And I haven't did any of these mostly, but I have been playing a lot of the Monster Hunter series my whole entire life. And I just want to share this with you guys to see what you guys' opinions are and, you know, where you guys see the series going, uh, going forward. But, yeah, man, we're going to touch up on this thing here. Make sure you guys comment, like, and um, sub to the channel. Really appreciate it. So, let's go ahead and get to it, man. So, yeah, man, first things first, we're going to start off from generation one all the way to five. And, you know, you'll, you'll see, you know, hell of more things about that. But first, we're not going to do the PS2 game and we're not going to do the uh, online or any of the frontiers. They're just here on this tier list thing. And, um, you know, we're not going to use those. But currently, let's start off with the number one pick. Of course, it'll be the OG Monster Hunter Freedom. I want to put that at S. I'm gonna put it in A. Did that by mistake, but man, this was a decent game, man. A lot of people um, don't like the earlier Monster Hunter series because they were too hard, and you know, I mean, Monster Hunter deserve some of that flack. A lot of the one hit KO moves were like abysmal, and when people talk about drop rates, Jesus Christ, you guys do not understand. There was no male lady here. There was nobody you can go to to do it for you. There's been times where to get a Rathalos Ruby or something like that, you had to fight that Rathalos like 30 times, 50 times. And, you know, they're not going to hold your hand on these early Monster Hunters. So if you really want, the, like I said, the core definitive experience where Monster Hunter really grinded out, where people talked about the difficulty, um, that's there. Now, I had someone on my last Monster Hunter video commented that they got on World and you know somebody compared it to dark souls now those are two different games i wouldn't compare them the same but like I, I would say difficulty wise dark souls is way harder than monster hunter and i don't know what someone would compare the two anyway but what people got to understand world is way more dumbed down than these uh other monster hunters on the handheld devices and it came much later so in order for them to appeal to more broader audience they have toned down a lot of the one hit kills, a lot of the drop rate mechanics, everything. So I mentioned this last time, um, you know, a lot of people is going to cry about, um, you know, they started off with an easy one or this one and that one. Um, it doesn't matter how you played it, whether it was hard or it was not hard. I just want you guys honest opinion in the comments. What was your best game that you like? And, you know, um, do you currently play another one? Whether it's World or uh, you're going to get um, Rise. Like I said, I already said Rise is going to be a good game, but people just didn't like their opinion with me saying I'm not going to buy it. So they'll get over that. So let's go ahead and go to the second one, man. Like I said, one was pretty good. It just it lacked some more content going forward. And, you know, there was no big old thing with updates and DLC and all that. You know, we couldn't get all that. So that's how that's going to work. So people would put it in a B tier, but that come on, man. This this is the original my son. So. Let's go ahead and do uh, two. So we got Monster Hunter Freedom 2. I will put that also here in the A tier. Because, like I said, man, this was just a continuation of Monster Hunter 1. Um, it did better things, you know, more monsters, different weapons and whatnot. But there wasn't too many distinctions playing both of them, especially someone who played them and, and beat them to the ends meet, beat every creature. And what you guys got to understand is that when you go from one and two, unless there's a draft, drastic change, which you'll see currently um, you know, as we go down the timeline, those changed around. But two wasn't too much different from one besides monsters and them introducing like, the, you know, some other weapons, katanas and, you know, whatnot. But other than that, it was a very fun game overall. And man, I could just think back on the memories of playing that. And I actually lived down the street with one guy. So if I didn't meet up with him, of course, um, you know, I had to play it solo. So there was no online. You had to do ad hoc only. So let's go ahead and um, go to the next one. So as you guys see in the series, Try is the next one here in the series. So what people got to understand, this is considered Monster Hunter 3. So there's not any uh, uh, confusion. So I will put try at a B. And this is why a lot of people may not like this. Is that this is you playing Monster Hunter on a Wii. 
controller versus uh, a 3ds or a uh, a psp i don't like i said i don't think any of these uh monster hunter games that i mentioned here are bad try is not a bad game by any means it's just that the way capcom have them set up the way they wanted you to play them is not the same so this one i said about the tone downness try doesn't have the hardcore hey let's go fight the crazy drop rate the crazy mechanics they introduced some new mechanics in this where you know you fighting in the water and some other stuff of course you got the motions with the controller for the wii and like i said it was just a fun experience the hardcoreness is toned down so depending on what you like try maybe upper on this tier list or lower on this tier list because of that but that depends on the person if you feel if you need a game that really challenges you to do that which is i am um, playing monster Hunter from the jump it's a downgrade from the first two i'm just saying that up front and that's just my honest opinion about that like i said yours may differ so let's go ahead and move to the next one man here and like i said i'm not going to do the frontiers or online but i'm going to mention stories because that's a unique title and that's just what's on this list but um as you guys know from three monster hunter three you have three ultimate three ultimate is basically just expansion to monster hunter try so put that here in a i will not put it in an s because it just approved upon what was better for from try so it introduced a lot of different things and it was great overall except it just touched base on this the gameplay was mostly the same but the, the little stuff that they did improve would gladly boost it up to an a now these two are like this because these are base like where there are psp but these are not these are both in the same game but these were more significant changes than these these were minor changes but let's go ahead and go to the next one here like i said i'm trying to try not to make this video too long but then now we got uh monster hunter 4. so as you guys see or at least if i want to go here i can leave this there but we're just gonna put uh unite like i said i think unite came before these they did but i'm just gonna put unite here i wanted to save it this is really what really why i want to do this but I'm just going to put Unite here because I've been going from one, two, and three, and I was going to get to four and then touch up on the other ones. I wasn't going in no specific order when they released. I just was going in order. But come on. Got to put Unite at an S. There's no way Unite is not an S. Unite has one of the most content filled Monster Hunter than mo mostly all of them besides World. And maybe an exceptions of uh, Generation Ultimate, since that was just remastered with more content. But other than that, it had made way more content to all these games put together. And Monsters, it had a lot more to kill than Portable Third. So you guys don't see Portable Third on this list, and that's because it's not a main title. Now it came after uh, Freedom Unite. And I played Portable Third, and of course you guys had to play it and get it through other means. But Portable Third was great only because the new monster variation. It wasn't too much different from Freedom Unite. It was, um, you know, you can fight the Zenogre, um, the Kush, and uh, some uh, and some other monsters in there. But this game had more to do and more content. You can look this up. It had more content than Portable Third. Portable Third just has an ogre and some more, more other monsters on it. But when you look at the monster list, Portable uh, Monster Hunter Unite, you had 81 monsters to kill, and Portable Third you only had 60. That's a big difference, and the variations were pretty much almost the same, except some monsters were taken out when it was sent over to Portable Third because they probably thought those monsters were useless. So Portable Third, even if it was on this list. I would put Portable Third at a S. Portable Third is a S, even though it's not here. So if you guys haven't got there yet or you don't see it, like I said, this was just was a random generator I found. Uh, Portable Third would be an S. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. Like I said, we got the three ultimates. So now we can go back in that order sequence because that's when they actually start coming out. But all the PSP ones came first and then, you know, the 3DS and the Wii U's games. So let's go ahead and do four. As you guys know, 4 came out in Japanese and Korean only, and it was never released internationally. So depending on if you had 
you know, different means of accessing things outside the region, whether you order this specific um, uh, Japanese 3DS or something like that, or if, you, um, you know, you got it through other means, which I'm not going to mention, you, you probably played it. So I will put Monster Hunter 4 because 4 is already a great title going forward, but 4 Ultimate expanded on what it was. 4 Ultimate will go to the S tier and it's there because of that reason. It's a very big staple. To the series and it introduced a lot it changed drastically from the psp variations and to the um the wii variations and it was um on, on the 3ds you know and then and, and that game was like a beast man that game was nice um you know like i said it was just some different things capcom took on which system they wanted to release on which i didn't agree upon and a lot of people got mad on that last video. But like I said, I'm still eating that salt right now with the chips that I currently have. But that game was a beast, man. A lot of different monsters, a lot of different ways you fight. That game was great overall. So let's go ahead and go to the next one, man. We're almost here to the uh, end point. So after my son of four ultimate, we have generations, which came. And then you had generations ultimate that came after. So I'm just going to put Generations Ultimate here instead of just regular Generations. And I would put Generation Ultimate here at a S because it's in that uh, definitive option. I will put Generations here in the A list because this is just a better version of this. Like I said, it's more, you know, HD. They added two new monsters and, you know, the whole setup is different. So Generation Ultimate is a S. So right now it's the best monster hunter game to play on handheld and the best game to play overall on console or anywhere will be here just automatically a s now a lot of people don't like world or some don't have mixed reviews and this include iceborne you know you don't see it but it includes iceborne and monster hunter world has been capcom's best again capcom's best selling game ever and that's the reason why that game has been uh easily accessible on all the systems that it's available on and a lot of people play it which came out with this matching for iceborne and they made it more killing with that but yeah man this game here was a beast um world is still great like i mentioned in my last video i try not to play too much of it so i don't beat all the content so when they release uh alatreon and Fatalist, I didn't even touch the game for like a month. And I just come back and I may take two or three days out. And then I'll just go do the content. But I know if I play it day one, I would have been beat it all. And I would have been waiting. But I still find ways to enjoy that game even more. Um, like I said, we're going to see. Uh, like I said, it's normally it's at the end of life. But I'm at Fatalist on mine. So I just need to beat him. And then I'll be done. But like I said, I could have beat him already. I already have all the armor that I need. I'm just going to do it, which I'm eventually do anyway. But yeah, man, that game is a beast. Of course, some people didn't like it because some of the monsters for them seem difficult. But I try to tell people, man, look, man, you don't understand. You think this is difficult? If you play some of these games here from even just Unite, you don't even want you don't even have to touch the OG one two. These these are already people were struggling with the Yan Cuckoo. He was he was hard to most people. Listen, eighty percent of the player base, if they played this, they were struggling on the Yan Cuckoo. He was that hard for most people. They wouldn't have made it. They wouldn't have made it in this era. So that's why Capcom changed it up. Which was great. Let you ride monsters. Let you wall bang them. All those things. Those are different new mechanics. They don't take away how great it is. I don't think the game is bad because of that. But like I said, it's just a little toned down. That's just all that is. But um, yeah, man. Monster Hunter uh, World. The best Monster Hunter out ever. Even according to Capcom. And you know, there's no, no going about that. Of course, you may have a different opinion. Like I said, leave in the comments what you guys best uh, Monster Hunter game is for you. I want to see what you guys have to say. And like I said, I've been playing the Monster Hunter series for a long time. And, um, you know, I really like the series. And I like to see it continue, um, you know, further going on. Like I already said, Rise is going to be a good game. And, um, you know, everybody who's going to buy it should be happy with their purchase. But like I said, man, Monster Hunter stories, man, I am a big guy with 
uh, turn-based games. Like I said, I love Fire Emblem and some other honorable mentions. So I'm going to put my son's stories here at the S list because this game was hella fun. So if you haven't played it and you got a DS laying around or if you want to look at it, I would say go look at it. And it was a great game, man. You know, especially being turn-based, me being a big JRPG fan or RPG fan overall. Um, you know, I play those type of games. But just imagine what a monster hunter spent on it and you know, being able to get on get these selected monsters and fight and do all this. It's more of a dream come true normally, you know, with Monster Hunter, be able to get your own dinos and, you know, raise them and whatnot. You know, this is pretty fun. So I like I like that. So that, that wasn't bad at all. But man, that's just going to complete my tier list for the Monster Hunter series. Like I said, I don't want to stay too much on the frontiers and the uh, spinoffs because they got so many. And like I said, you had so many things that's not recognizable from not being released internationally or not being released, you know, for you know this and that other reasons. Um, one honorable mention about Portable Third, or no, not Portable Third, was it? Let me see. We have one honorable mention about uh, Try. Try was supposed to be released on PS3, but they canceled it in order to make um, it just an exclusive to the, to the Wii. So that was just one thing about that, man. Like I said, my son of four was a Japanese exclusive, and then they released four and gave us that as a, a worldwide release. But yeah, other than that, man, you know, the game has been great overall. Like I said, I don't think none of them are bad. I think I think all of them are good. And, um, you know, anybody who's looking to get in the series, they can play any of these and have a fun time and enjoy the series as a whole. So, like I said, Rise is going to continue on that. I just said, I'm going to wait to the definitive part. This shows in the history that that happens all the time where they came out with a one and then that happens. So let's say if somebody didn't play Generations, and then they bought Generations Ultimate on the Switch. They didn't miss much from this. And that's why I, like, I said a lot in that last video. And a lot of people didn't understand that. So I hope you guys do understand that now. And that it's not confusing. And it's not rocket science. So like I said, man, hit the bell, man. Make sure you guys hit the notification so you see when the next video come out. And um, like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys being here with me today. And I'll uh, catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.